Cryptocurrency Detection Group. And uh, I'm Tom. Kevin. Uh, so, basically, this was a problem about uh, computer vision and image processing. And uh, because it was meant to go on a mobile device, we couldn't really use a lot of existing software that was uh, developed for this type of thing. So, we wrote most of it ourselves uh, and used the Java's built in APIs. Uh, to help us. Um, we started out doing it on um, J2SE, so the standard Java for desktop, because uh, it's a little easier to prototype on that. Um, and then moved on to uh, attempting to do it on J2ME for mobile phones. Um, limited success, but we made some progress. Uh, but I'm going to basically describe how we went about uh, detecting what type of uh, currency we're reading, or what types of currency is input to our program. Um, so first of all, we, we read the input image. Um, the final product, we read it from a cell phone camera. Uh, we didn't quite get that far, so we just had some sample images stored on our computer that we just loaded in. Um, so after that, we had to normalize the image uh, to sort of get it to the correct um, color and uh, be able to sort of get a black image of the bill on a white background so it's easy to sort of detect where it was, that sort of thing. So we did that through expanding the dynamic range, uh, which basically just means um, cutting out the low frequency colors at the high and low end of the uh, spectrum and expanding that to take the whole range. Um, and also we, we convert to grayscale at the beginning, so it's uh, a bit easier than trying to um, do it with color. So we expand dynamic range and quantize it to uh, two colors, so we have black and white basically. And then uh, we detect the vertices, so the four corners of the bill, um, using a binary search algorithm. And so once we have those, those vertices, we're able to extract the, um, just the bill from the original image using a series of rotations, translations, scaling, and uh, cropping. So then we have um, sort of um, just the single image of the bill. And uh, we can compare that to reference images that we have of uh, each different type of bill. Um, so different values as well as different uh, additions of that value, so like new $20 bills or old ones. Um, so we compare it to each one, going through this little loop here, with uh, a root mean square comparison. And uh, finally, we detect which one was most similar to our input image, and uh, display that to the user. Or, well, displaying it isn't very helpful since um, you know, the primary target for this is can't see. So we uh, ideally would play an audio clip uh, with the value. Uh, so that's that's sort of the basic flow of our program. And that is really yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to do a quick demonstration. Uh, <clears throat> right now, it's a command line program that uh, I have a little demo script. Uh, well, well, it's not a command line program. <laughs> uh, so the first one, first of all, it's, it's bringing up these sample images, but I'll show you those later. So, um, this is the show where it started at first. All right, so I'm going to go back to this. This is uh, our input image. You can see it's uh, rotated a bit, and it's it's kind of well, it's basically rotated. So. Um, these are two input images, ten and twenty dollars. And the first one is ten. So let me just run that again. Um, so I don't know if you can hear that, but it said ten dollars, and uh, it says ten dollars here. And so this, this image on our left is the uh, sample or the uh, input image that we 
translated and rotated and scaled and quantized and expanded uh, the dynamic range and all that stuff. And the one on the right is the sample or the uh, reference image, which we did the same sort of thing to so that we could compare them. Um, so that's the $10 one. Now if I quit this, it'll do the $20 one. $20. So there's the $20 one. And uh, again, that was, the original image was rotated, all this stuff. So uh, that's just basically demonstrating that it sort of works. Yeah, all right. So now Kevin's going to show you the uh, mobile, what we accomplished on the mobile side of things. Yeah, we, we won't even leave it. While you explain the binary search algorithm, how you find the bill in the launch space? You make very proof of drive on the board. Okay, yeah. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll try to explain it. But uh, if you're familiar with binary search, uh, you basically um, sort of subdivide your search space. And, and we're sort of trying to find uh, vertices of a rotated image. So we start like in the middle. And uh, if, if we, inter we can test each pixel along there, see if it intersects uh, anywhere along there. So if it does, we know that there's a vertice uh, between the top and the middle. So then we go halfway up there, uh, and we do the same thing. And uh, if, if it, again, intersects, then we know it's even further up. And we keep subdividing it. So uh, rather than doing a brute force search of the entire thing, uh, it's much more efficient. It's, um, familiar with complexity theory, it's uh, order log n instead of n square, yeah, n. So it's uh, much quicker. And uh, so we do it both um, for the horizontal one, and then we just rotate the entire image and do it again for the vertical ones. And uh, we're able to find the four vertices, basically, in that. So for the mobile edition, well, we, uh, we defined all of our, we created an interface, and then for all of our operations, then we created you know, a standard, a standard edition, Java standard edition class that, classes that implemented that in Java SE, and then a mobile, mobile edition classes that implemented it in mobile edition. We tried to make the, the standard edition one um, as portable as possible. But, so this is, uh, this is an emulator right here, just kind of a, of a generic phone. Um, they can run Java, and so right now I'm going to open up our program. Now, first of all, obviously we use the camera, but we realized, even after we got a camera, that um, that the emulator can't just can't read from a camera that's plugged into your computer. So we can't, we couldn't use use the camera like that. So I can pull up. I, mean, I, I if the code's in place to see what's in the user's camera, but whenever you run it in the emulator, it just uses this can sequence. So I mean, I can capture from it, but it won't help us in this thing. So normally you take the picture, and then this emulator brings up this this thing, <laughs> and then right here it would tell you the the value. This is just you know a really basic image. Oh, um, it would tell you the value. Um, unfortunately, we. Uh, you know, because at the very end, we were recording all this code over, and there were some, some libraries that weren't present in Mobile Edition, um, some math functions that we weren't able to get the full functionality, but just to prove that a lot of our code runs, I uh, just implemented a few of them. So this, this test thing basically will just take in an input image, it will uh, expand the dynamic range on it, and quantize it, I think, but most of the stuff works except for um, it's the vertex detection that's not working right now. But so right now it's doing calculations and it just ran all that stuff on this image and, and displayed it. But it's, and then you know, obviously it would show the value here. So it's basically all we need is an implementation of arc sign and assume everything else worked, then, uh, then we're good. But we just realized that at like 7 o'clock. <laughs> so is there, is there anything else? Yeah, I think that's our project. Thanks for thanks for listening. We had a great time doing it for sure.